So these quarters numbers, it seems, hit by the lull in uh, oil and gas prices. What's your outlook for European gas and LNG prices in the months and years ahead? Or just the months? Well, uh, well good morning and thanks for having me. Um, as, as you said, we, uh, we report our results uh, today and uh, they are um, affected by and impacted by uh, the drop in both uh, oil and gas prices. And that is the main reason uh, you see behind um, behind the drop. When it comes to your question about uh, the outlook for uh, gas prices in, in Europe, uh, we believe them uh, will uh, pick up again uh, in the third quarter and especially uh, coming winter. And you see already that reflected in the forward prices. You've said that you'll dedicate more of your Norwegian exploration efforts specifically at natural gas prospect, Lars. Are you reconsidering that? Uh, this is, uh, you know, from from discovery uh, to uh, to production, uh, it takes you sort of, uh, you know, five to ten years, uh, dependent on um, whether this is something that you can tie back to an existing installation or not. Uh, and the reason for that comment is that you see in in a ten years uh, time horizon that there will be some spare capacity in the pipeline network for gas export to Europe uh, from the Norwegian continental shelf. So, so that that is uh, why we uh, we said uh, what we said uh, when it comes to sort increasing the attention for discovering gas in, in Norwegian continental shelf. Yeah, and what about your efforts to acquire gas assets that would allow you to fill an upcoming gap in your portfolio, Lars? If that's still valid, where are you looking and where are you seeing opportunities? Well, we do so through the drill bit and, uh, and the coming exploration rounds uh, and existing uh, recent ones uh, on the Norwegian continental shelf. And then uh, uh, our drill rate uh, success uh, will determine whether we discover oil and gas or, uh, or not. Now, Exxon's looking to sell its entire Norwegian oil and gas portfolio. It could be the biggest oil deal in the country in as many years at as much as $3.5 billion, Lars. Would that be something you're considering or would you be concerned uh, about the Norwegian authorities putting their foot down because of a risk around concentration and competition? Uh, we uh, don't see that there will be a risk for the Norwegian government to, to set its foot down if uh, we are going to pursue that opportunity uh, and get it. Um, I think it's uh, important to be aware of that we are actually the operator for the majority of that uh, portfolio that Exxon is putting up for sale and we are in the, the, the assets uh, already. Uh, and whether we are looking at that portfolio or other opportunities, we are no traditional uh, making comments. Uh, you, you need to read about it when the deal has been done, like the one you saw with, um, with regards to the recent uh, deal with Lundin, where we were able to increase our equity in the Johan Söderup uh, world-class asset. Lars, can you give us an update on the Johan Sverdrup project in Norway? So I believe you've said before it would start in November. Your partners, though, hoping it could start earlier. What's the sort of timing on that Johan Sverdrup project right now? Well, we all hope that we can start up, uh, and the sooner, of course, is the better. But uh, this is a very big uh, project, uh, a world-class asset, uh, and our current plan is that it will start up uh, during November this year. We have uh, today taken down the, the capital uh, estimate for the development of phase one uh, from 86 to 83 billion Norwegian kroners. Uh, uh, and since the plan for development uh, and operation was uh, approved by the authorities, we have taken down the capital estimate with 40 billion Norwegian kroners, uh, close to 5 billion uh, US uh, dollars. The other news uh, today is that uh, when it comes to ramping up the production to plateau, 440,000 barrels per day, um, we say that we will be able to do so by summer next year, which is uh, a couple of months um, faster than previously announced. All right, well, we'll see if the market uh, takes that positively. Another thing that the market might be listening out for, Lars, is that you signalled a year and a half ago that there was an emerging scope for share buybacks. Now, since then, what you've done is prioritise raising the cash dividend, reducing debt. Has anything changed in terms of the scope for buybacks? Uh, we have said uh, and, and repeated uh, many times that uh, our priority when it comes to returning cash to our shareholders is uh, through cash dividend, and then we would like to strengthen our balance sheet, which we have did, done. 
since uh, year end, and um, and then uh, we will uh, look at the different opportunities for uh, for making changes in uh, in our portfolio, both from a divestment point of view and an acquisition uh, point of view. But I also think that um, it's worth uh, reflecting on um, the fact that uh, the recent drops and the volatility in oil and gas prices um, merits uh, to keep a very very strong balance sheet, uh, and uh, that is uh, one of our key priorities. Yeah, Lars, earlier you were saying that you do expect natural gas prices uh, to start picking up. Do you have the same view for oil prices? Yeah, fundamentally, we believe that oil prices uh, <coughs> will will come up. Um, uh, but um, our sort of best remedy to build a resilient company and be robust in, in this environment with such extreme volatility is to um, keep on um, working of the cost and, and capital structure. Um, you see from the quarterly results that we're able to keep uh, the improvements that we were able to achieve during the downturn uh, and work it, uh, work it further. Uh, and uh, then we yes. are investing in a world-class portfolio that will uh, bring more value to the company over a short, medium and long term.